Hello all my chickadees! Welcome back! Today we're going to be checking out 14 Days with You because yes, I need to add another Yandre boy to my collection. <laughs> I was missing the color pink. So we're going to take care of that today. Now, this is still a work in progress so we can only play day one out of, I'm guessing, 14. So we are just going to dive right in, as always, and check it out. Now, oh, that's cool. Now, if you guys hear purring, it's because my kitty is curled up next to me. Because he wants to join me today. Before we go any other, uh, any further, we need to cover some things. Tell me, what's your name? There we go. And what pronouns do you need? Ooh, this is cool. I love the aesthetic of this. So your name is Sparrow and you use he, him pronouns. Yes. I see. I can't wait to finally meet you, Angel. Ooh. And in other news, the remains of yet another body has been pulled out from Lake Blue Moss making a total of four unidentified victims in the past year. Authorities believe that... Uh, stifling a groan with the rim of my coffee cup, I fish around for the remote lodged between the cushions and turn off the TV. I wasn't about to let some morbid headline damper the start of my cheerful morning, especially considering how today was going to be my first day at work after finally getting that hard-earned promotion. I mean, sure, stacking and sorting things uh, through books at a library might not have been my dream job, or even my first choice of places to work at, but the pay was nice. My co-workers were friendly, and the building was located within the perfect wa walking distance from my apartment. There was even this adorable little bakery along the way that served the best shortcakes and cro croissants known to mankind. And the manager there always loved to hand out small freebies whenever I stopped by. Ooh, heck yeah. I guess moving back to Corland Bay wasn't so bad. I mean, aside from all the murder and killing that's been going on recently. It still beat living in the city, though. Honestly, I wasn't even sure why I left my hometown in the first place. The fast-paced hustle and bustle lifestyle of the city just wasn't what I was longing for whenever I stared out my window on sleepless nights. And the people there were always rude and indignant. Nothing at all like Corland Bay, where everyone felt like a close-knit family and the air smelt like the sea rather than pollution. And sure, the local crime rate might be getting out of hand recently, and there might be less things for me to do here, but my new job kept me busy, and I preferred... Spending alone time at the beach over visiting shady bars with people I barely considered friends. In fact, ooh, one of our friends calling us. Bzz, bzz, bzz. Sorry, my cat's in the way. <laughs> Setting my mug into the table, I reached into my pocket and pulled out my phone. A notification from Moth, my online friend, pops up. Okay, Moth's a cool name. So, I tap on the screen to read their message. What greets me is an adorable sticker of some anime character giving a thumbs up. As well as a short message that said, Good luck today! Underneath. Aww. Moth is a nice supportive friend. Everybody needs a supportive friend. Moth had always been adamant on showing their endless support for me. Even after five years of friendship. Cursed memes and shitty Wi-Fi video calls. And even though I never admitted out loud, I was truly grateful to have someone like them in my life. Everyone needs a moth, okay? Everyone needs a moth. Pulling up the keyboard, I began to type a response to their message. How will you respond? Say thank you. Send back another sticker. Reply later. Send back a meme with zero contacts. <laughs> okay, uh, we're gonna reply now. Okay, we don't need, need to leave our boy waiting. He was like, good luck today, and had an anime character. So, let's say thank you or send back another sticker, I think. Let's send back another sticker. 
when did I download that pack of anime stickers? Not that I was about to complain or anything. After all, they're free. Extremely cute. And excluded and included some of my favorite comfort characters. Heck yeah. Without he hesitation, I sent back a sticker of some green hair protagonist holding up a giant heart. It's Deku! You can't tell me no difference. That is Deku. <laughs> Midoriya! A gray chat bubble pops up just as I hit the send button, indicating that Moth was typing out another message. By the way, didn't you say that last night you were going to head to work at 8? Because it's like almost 9.30. Where are you now? Uh-oh. We late. Or am I just dumb and got the time zones mixed up again? Looking at the time displayed on my phone, I immediately let out a string of curses and leaped to my feet. Shit! Grabbing the coat that I had carelessly strewn across the back of the sofa earlier, I uh, quickly shrug it on before making a beeline towards the front door. Before I leave, however, I spare myself one final glance at the poorly hung mirror in the hallway. Hopefully the outfit I chose was appropriate for my job. <laughs> I'm getting blocked by my cat again. <laughs> oh gosh. This, this is daily life. <laughs> What style did you go for? Something cutesy. Something something comfy. Something alternative. Something professional. Professional. Something trendy. Something casual. Hmm. Well, we're working at a library, right? We need something casual or comfy, I think. Because when I think of library, I think of just cozy. You know what I mean? Of course, I'm a bookworm, so... <laughs> Something comfy. Oh, please. Climbing shelves and carrying a stack of books while wearing something stiff and uncomfortable? Yeah, no thanks. See? He gets it. He gets it. I pull the sleeves of my sweater down to smooth out all the folds and give myself an appreciative nod in the mirror. But enough of that. I can check myself out some other time. Hastily, I smooth out the wrinkles and pick off any stray pieces of lint from my sleeves before I finally head out the front door. And almost catch my coat on the door handle in the process. We're having a day. <laughs> oh no. I've done that. With a grumble, I tug at the fabric of my coat before slamming the door shut with a little bit too much force than necessary. Even trying to insert my key came with a bit of a struggle. And I had to fight the urge to yell in frustration as I attempt to lock my door. Yep. <laughs> when you're in a hurry, everything stops you. <laughs> Seriously, when would that lazy bum of a landlord do something about this? I swear I complained in, uh, about this at least four times this month. Oh, hello. Is this our neighbor? Oh, hey there, Sparrow. Looking good. My neighbor. Called it. Violet practically beams at me while she fishes through her pockets for her own apartment key. Resting on her hips was yet another potted plant, and I found myself wondering where she was going to put it this time. I was almost entirely convinced her whole apartment had been turned into a greenhouse at this point, considering how her balcony was practically filled to the brim with different kinds of plants, greenery, and other various kinds of flora. But... I wasn't about to complain or anything. The fragrance that wafered in with the wind always smelled very floral and earthy. And it did well to mask the smell of smirk and smoke and burnt food whenever I tried to cook. <laughs> okay, so we're horrible cooks, too. Oh, no. Love the shoes, by the way. Her voice pulls me away from my thoughts, and I notice how the growing smell on her face doesn't seem to falter. In respond, I shoot her one of my own, and apparently, and it was apparently enough to brighten her mood, even more than it was already. How will you respond? What exactly are you holding? Is that another plant? It's nice to see you again. Sorry, V, I'm in a rush. I think, is that another plant could come off wrong? Uh, let's just say it's nice to see you again. Yeah, it's nice to see you too. I'd usually still be at the flower shop at this time. So it's nice to be able to catch up with uh, with you like this, especially when our schedules align. 
Speaking of, you should stop by my place next time you're free. I'd love to introduce uh, you to this little guy's family. Oh, I almost forgot. I've been meaning to ask you this, but when were you going to tell me that you were seeing someone? Huh? A knowing look pulls at her features as Violet continues to fiddle with the lock on her door. What are you talking about? Yeah, what are you talking about? Come on, don't like, don't act like you didn't just have a guy over last night. I saw him leaving when I took Kathy out for a walk. I'd be more worried about my neighbor taking her plants, named plants, out on a walk at night. But the thought of someone leaving my apartment seems to set off a way more alarm bells. Yeah, yeah, that that's more of a, um, focus point <laughs> at the moment. Um... Who was leaving our apartment? I give Violet a concerned look and she picks up on it almost immediately. You don't remember? Don't tell me you were drunk or something. With a huff, she gives up on trying to unlock her door. It seems as though we both shared the same problem with our apartment locks and places her plotted plant on the ground before slowly making her way towards me. Tall guy? Wearing dark slashers hoodie? Probably into either alternative fashion or bondage with the crazy amount of belts and loops wrapped around his leg. Ring any bells? No. <laughs> Is it supposed to? Uh, no. Last night I was just catching up on some TV shows and talking with my friend. No one came here. And even if they did, I would have heard them. Like, place isn't really that big anyway. Really? But I was so sure it was at your door. A hand rests on her cheek in a thinking manner before she pouts up at me, seemingly giving in for now. Well, alright then. Maybe it was someone else's apartment? I mean, it's always so dark in these hallways at night. Honestly, what is our landlord doing? Wait. I just had a theory. What if our landlord is dead? Because there's, like, murders and stuff going on. What if our landlord is dead and no one has realized it yet? Because apparently we haven't communicated with the landlord in, like, a month from what I gather. We've been calling, but no answer. Uh, and the landlord hasn't been keeping things up. So what if he's dead and no one knows it yet? Oh, theory time. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, get back in the game. But still, would it be okay if I check with security downstairs? It'd give me some peace of mind. Yeah, that's fine. Alright then, well, I got some plants to water and some MM MMOs to raid in. So, Violet lets out one last huff before she picks up her plant. What did she name this one again? And goes back to unlocking her door. Good talk, I guess. Even if it was kind of awkward. Hehe. <laughs> Uh, yeah, sure. See you later, Vi. Slipping past my neighbor and into the cramped hallway, I quickly make for the stairs. When will they fix that damn elevator? And break into a slight jog. Thankfully, the weather was rather cool today, and the shoes I chose wouldn't leave me with blisters by the time I reached the library. See? See? If we would have picked, like, a more formal outfit and clothes, we would have had blistered feet all over the place, and we don't want that. No. The smell of old paper, coffee, and soft incense flood my senses as I step through the glass door of the library. The melodic, the, the soft chimes alert the woman at the reception desk of my arrival, and I watch as she tucks a strand of stray blonde hair behind her ear as she turns to greet me. Hey, Eleanor. Oh. She looks surprised for some reason before her expression morphs into a soft smile and she beckons me closer with a nod of her head. Eleanor is one of my co-workers here at Corlin Bay Library and one of the very few people here who actually gets work done. And although she's notorious for being rather scattered brain, she more than makes up uh, for it with her caring and doting attitude towards everyone. But her nurturing personality can get rather overbearing at times and I also find myself uh having to step away in order to get some breathing room nevertheless she's a charming person to work with and i appreciate her always looking out for me after all who knows what my sleeping schedule would look like without her help 
Sparrow, just on time. I printed out your... Wait, wh where did I... Her expression turns to a slight panic as she spins on her heels, and I silently watch with amusement as she shuffles through the various books and stacks of paper lining her desk. Where did I leave it? Oh, here it is. Spinning around once more, Eleanor uh, comes back and hands me a sheet of paper with the word schedule printed in big bold letters. I take it from her grasp and give the sheet a once over. Well, it looks like I'm going to be busy for the next few weekends, but I guess Eleanor doesn't seem to share the same disdain as me, judging from the playful look plastered on her face. So, how does it feel to no longer be the one in charge of stacking books all day long? Though, you still have to work the front desk from time to time, though, unfortunately. I offer a weak smile at her words before rounding the corner and placing my bag under the desk. And as I begin to pull out some of my belongings, the front door chimes once more, letting everyone know that a patron had come in. Figuring Eleanor had it covered, I leave the customer to her as I go back to settling everything, setting everything up for the day. But as I turn around to check on her, I notice that Eleanor had already finished greeting the customer and was on her way back to her own desk across from mine. As if sensing my gaze, she spins around in her office chair and flashes me a teasing grin. Look like he's back again. Eleanor gives a soft chuckle as she inclines her head in the direction of the person she was talking about. You know, the new guy. I don't know when he starts showing up here in the bay, but he always comes in here and rents out the, uh, the books you recommend on the display window. And if I didn't know any better, I'd say he has a little crush on you. Especially with that outfit. You look amazing, so I can't really fault him for staring. Wait, this guy comes in here and he rents out the books that we recommend. And, hmm, this could be our stalker. Is this our stalker? Because he was staring a lot. Snorting, I pushed Eleanor's office chair so that she's facing the other way and focused my attention back on the papers in front of me. What was with everyone today? Always smiling, gossiping about other people, and meddling in business that wasn't their own. It was bad enough that I had to deal with a, a potential intruder, and I doubt my deadbeat landlord was going to do anything about it. I might just need to buy a stronger lock on my way home from work. Maybe even some kind of alarm system. But would the store still be open by then? All of a sudden, I get pulled backwards as Eleanor playfully wheels my chair around and leans over my shoulders, softly speaking in my ear. Eleanor! Eleanor, we're trying to do work! Can't you see? Oh my gosh. Really? We, we just said, <laughs> leave us alone and turned you around and you're like, right back at us. We're trying to do work. I see, I see what we mean by sometimes we just have to step away if we want a moment of peace. Will you look at that lover boy in aisle 8 needs some help, it seems. She nods her head in the direction of the light red, the red light flashing above the bookshelf, signaling to staff that someone in the row needs assistance. With a sigh, I reluctantly stand up and make my way over. I already know for a fact that Eleanor wasn't going to go help them herself, so I begrudgingly began to make my way towards aisle 8 alone. I knew better than to glance back though, knowing fully well that my teasing co-worker would be supporting the biggest grin on her face at my misfortune. Ducking around the corner and into the aisle, I was immediately met with a broad backside that was covered with what had to be the comfiest looking cardigan I ever seen. The person whom it belonged to, however, hadn't seemed to notice me yet. So I awkwardly clear my throat and absentmindedly shift my weight from foot to foot. <coughs> like, <coughs> yes, hello, you needed help? There we go. <coughs> <coughs> look at him. He is cute. Oh, look at that pastel pink hair morphing into like this light baby blue. Oh my gosh, that is a very comfy looking cardigan. He is cute. Uh-huh. He seemed to jump at the sudden noise before sheepishly 
turning around to face me. Immediately I felt myself taken back by his soft demeanor, doe-like eyes, and imposing height. He's a tall, soft boy. So this was the guy who always rented out my recommended books on the display window, huh? Well, he definitely fit the aesthetic of a cozy literature lover in need of a good book. His pink hair also reminded me of Haruko, an anime character I had recently been obsessing over with Moth during one of our late night video calls. In fact, even the overall cut and style appeared vaguely similar to his. But then again, this hairstyle could have just been trending right now or something, and I just so happened to be the last one to know about it. But now that I, I really had a good look at him, which proved difficult considering his towering height over me, the stranger also seemed to, wear, seemed to bear an almost picture-perfect resemblance to the main lead from this webtoon I was reading. Huh. It was called Always With You, and it revolved around the main character meeting the love of his life at a library where they both... Wait. <laughs> As of noticing my spaced out look. I love it how they blink, okay? That's really cute. As of noticing my spaced out look, the stranger absentmindedly scratches at his jaw while he waits for me to snap out of my thoughts. In fact, I've been so distracted that I didn't even realize he'd been muttering quietly to himself. <laughs> okay. What kind of voice should I give this boy? Hmm. <clears throat> okay. Let me try this. <laughs> I knew you preferred softer looking clothing. I made the right choice with this outfit. <laughs> oh, sorry. I hope I'm not bothering you. I was just looking for... Uh... His voice pulls me back to the present, and I hastily try to make sense of what was spilling from his cherry-tinted lips. Watching him struggle with his words would have made any apathetic person feel bad, so I'll offer him a reassuring smile in return, an encouraging nod in my head. At that, he takes a steady inhale of air before trying again. I need some help. I'm looking for a specific book, you see, but... And now he's playing with the ends of his sleeves. I feel the sudden urge to reach out and stop him. Did I find the action annoying? Endearing? Relatable? Who knows? But instead, I held back and waited for him to find the words to speak. Oh, that's kind of cute, playing with the end of his sleeves. Uh, I think it's more of like a nervous feature or like just trying to keep your hands busy while you're doing something. Because uh, I've done that before. So I, I think I think it's just a way for, for dealing with emotions. Okay. But wow, even his mannerisms were eerily similar to Haruko's. The endearing awkwardness and supple sleeve tugging gave me a sense of deja vu. Okay, never mind. Um, I think. What if he like picked up like what books we recommend, and he's trying to act like these characters so that we'll trust him and get closer to him. And it honestly, felt like he walked straight out of the anime and into this very library. Man, Moth is gonna freak when I tell him about this later. The stranger in front of me takes another shaky inhale before he tries to speak once more. This time with a lot more confidence in his tone and a fire in his eye. Do you have any books on native flora? The best I've found are on generic wildlife, but nothing on Corlin Bay's plants. Or maybe I'm just in the wrong aisle? He was looking for a book about native flora? Perhaps I should introduce him to Violet. Chuckling to myself at the thought, I stepped closer to the tall man and began scanning the contents of the shelf beside him. He almost seemed to flinch. Oh, look how much he's blushing! <laughs> he almost seemed to flinch at the sudden closeness between us, but showed no signs of moving away. In fact, he seemed to almost lean closer and incline his head towards mine. And had I not been too preoccupied with finding that book... I would have noticed the way his breath hitches in his throat as my scent floods his senses. No, you're definitely in the right aisle. Those kind of books are just more hidden, I guess. 
I step past them this time and make my way over to the lower part of the shelves. Absentmindedly, I run a finger against the spines of each book until I come to contact with one book in particular. Bending over slightly, I pull the book from the shelf and give the cover a once-over before offering it to the man beside me. Is this what you're looking for? Too preoccupied with the misplaced book on the shelf, a uh, book on the bookshelf, who brings cookbooks to the nature aisle, I miss the way his blue eyes hungrily trail across my figure from my bent over position before landing on the book held out to my outstretched hands. Ooh, yeah, he likes us. <laughs> he's interested, okay, he's interested. With shaky fingers, he reaches out and takes it from me. I watch as he flips through the few, a few of the pages to take in some of the information. Before finally settling on the book with an affirmative nod. He, yes, this is exactly what I was looking for. Thank you. I'm glad. <laughs> You're like an angel sent down from heaven or something. You're so helpful. Kind, too. What? W what? Oh, uh, did I say that out loud? I, I didn't mean to. Uh, that must have been so weird. I'm, I'm so sorry. He looks as though he was about to cry now, so I hastily threw my hands up in a comforting manner and shoot him a reassuring smile. Hey, it's fine. No need to freak out. I just wasn't expecting someone to say that about me, is all. For, really? Well, for what it's worth, I think it's true. You really are like an angel. Um, thanks? Figuring that my cue to, that was my cue to leave before things got awkward. I gave him one last friendly smile and subtly glanced back towards the direction of the front desk. But the eccentric man showed no signs of moving. Instead, he just looked down at me expectantly. Did he want to continue the conversation? It seemed unlikely as he didn't say anything. He simply stared at me. Awkwardly, I cleared my throat for what had to be the millionth time today and gestured vaguely for the reception desk behind me. Um, well, if you don't need any more help, I should... It's just getting weird now. Should I even attempt to continue this conversation or just leave? I mean, it would seem rude to walk away abruptly, especially considering how he's, apparently, a regular patron in the library I worked at. But he wasn't making much of an effort either. What should I do? <laughs> he's in... He is entrapped by our beauty. He just wants to observe us. <laughs> this would be awkward, though. How will you respond? Keep talking to him. Stare back at him. Politely excuse yourself and leave. Lie and end the conversation. <laughs> That'd be funny just to stare back at him. He's staring at you. Why don't you stare back at him? Um, let's see. Stare back at him. I still think that's freaking hilarious. Be like, oh, what's this button? Ah, there's a save button. Okay. Okay. Hmm. I want to stare at him, okay? I. <laughs> <laughs> They're just like dot 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 dot. dot. <laughs> okay. Uh, you 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 shouldn't stare at me like that, especially w when it's with a stranger you don't know. Actually, now that I think about it, you haven't told me your name yet. Oh, I I guess you're right. You could call me Redacted. Uh, what? It was like he said something, but his voice was belayed. Was that even a voice? Was he speaking English? It almost felt like something that came out of a dream. How did you do that? Do what? Anyway, you can just call me Rin if you like. <laughs> okay, that was cool. Okay, Rin. Rin it is. Because your real name is Redacted. <laughs> Is it alright if I call you Sparrow? Though Angel does suit you just as well. In my personal opinion, at least. 
Seriously, what the hell just happened? Was I imagining things? And was he really flirting with me right now? Are, are you okay? Yeah, I, I think. But how do you know my name? I don't remember telling you. Silly. It's on your name tag. As if to prove a point, Rin reaches out to gently flick the name tag that I somehow forgot I had put on this morning. Oh. Sparrow is a cute name. Thank you. Thank you. Though, and it re it's really, really, really fun to say. Especially all over and over again. Alright. Anyways. Say, are you busy later? i love to thank you for helping me find this book. Seriously, what was up with this guy? One minute he's shy and the next he's bold? It was almost like he was putting up several fronts to see which one I responded to better. Joke's on him though, because I found all of them equally as headache inducing. Actually, I'm busy this afternoon. I need to buy a new lock for my apartment. A new lock? That doesn't sound good. Can I ask why? I guess it wouldn't hurt to tell him. I mean, what is he gonna do? Personally show up my doorstep and test the new lock himself? <laughs> I think he is. <laughs> I think he is. Apparently someone apparently someone broke into my apartment last night and I didn't notice. I don't think they stole anything, but still, it's creepy. I figured I might might be better than safe than sorry, you know? Yeah. But it sounds like instead of a lock, you just need to jump the scumbag when they at least expect it and beat them up to teach them a lesson. Stay up all night if you have to. Really get the edge on them. I couldn't help but let out a genuine chuckle at his suggestion. If I had to choose, then this would have been the side of him I preferred. He seemed at ease, and his words didn't seem as forced or awkward. And? Who's going to be the one to beat up the guy at 3 a.m.? Because last I checked, I'm not really the type to go around throwing punches at people I don't know. And definitely not before the sun is up and shining. I, I could do it for you. You? But, I mean, we don't even know each other that well, and that's fine. I could tell you all about myself on the walk there. My whole life story and everything. Where I was born, the school I went to, how many cute librarians I've met. Which happens to be one so far. Smooth. Smooth. <laughs> Before I could even comment on his sudden confidence, Rin seems to pick up on my discomfort at his choice of words. If it even was discomfort I was feeling. And hastily backtracks. H hey. Or, or not. I, I was just messing around. I didn't mean to make you feel uncomfortable. There it was again. That subtle shift in his personality. But... Now that he mentioned it, would it really hurt to invite him over to my place for the night? He definitely looked like he could handle himself in a fight, his contrasting outfit aside. So maybe it wasn't so bad of an idea. I think he's shifting uh, his personality so much because he's trying to find something that we like. Because he's desperate for us to like him. How will you respond? Invite him over or don't invite him over. Alright, we're going to invite the boy over. <laughs> Hopefully we don't die. <laughs> Actually, you know what? Would you mind coming over and staying the night? I honestly feel a bit safer knowing that someone else was around. And it's the blush. <laughs> uh, oh, you, you actually want me to come over? I mean, yeah. Sure. Definitely. He seemed a bit too eager for this. If it's not much, too much trouble, I... Where is he? Sparrow? Haha. <laughs> there you are. Someone at the front desk is looking for you and... Oh, sorry. Are you busy right now? I can... Impeccable timing as always, at Eleanor. No, it's fine. I think everything is already handled here, right? I give the two of them a soft smile before making my way towards the reception desk. But as I pass by Eleanor, I gently clasp a hand on her shoulder and shoot her a playful look of my own. If you need any more help, I'm sure Eleanor here can assist you. She loves helping others, right? 
Oh, look at that. He actually looks mad. <laughs> he looks mad. And as I turned to leave, I missed the way Rin's eyes zone in on my hand resting on Eleanor's shoulder. Oh, he didn't like us touching her. He's like, no, you're mine. He's like, why didn't you put your hand on my shoulder, huh? Hours seemed to pass by in a blur, and soon enough, I found myself resting up on, in the employee round, lounge. My mind dressed back to the guy from earlier, and I couldn't help but wonder what happened to him afterwards. Did he rent out the book I offered? What about my recommendation novel of the week? Ren surely was strange, to say the least. But I had to admit that he was kind of cute with his oversized cardigan and timid demeanor. He still gave off a, uh, he still gave me off-putting vibes though, especially with that ever-changing personality of his. And if I had to be completely honest, that shy and timid pers persona that he displayed felt rather forced to me. It was almost as if he saw it on TV or something and wanted to try it out himself. And I just happened to be one of his first victims. But who was I to call him out on it? If he wanted to act all shy and demure, that was his business. Deciding that I wasn't going to waste my time thinking about any more pink-haired guys, my beloved Haruko aside, I got up from the lounge and meandered my way back towards the front desk once more. But once I arrived, I immediately noticed that Eleanor was nowhere in sight. Um... That was odd. It wasn't like her to leave the reception desk unattended. Maybe she managed to knock over a pile of books again and was busy cleaning it up. Or maybe Rin got jealous that we we were showing her attention and took her out back and murdered her. Well, uh, whatever. I'm sure she'll turn up again soon. The impact from me plopping down to my office chair caused some of the papers around me to rustle. And a bright pink stinky note fluttered around captures my attention. Assuming it was left here by Eleanor, I peeled the note, a uh, folded note off my computer screen and read it. Angel! Unfolding it, read the following. I'll wait for you after work, but if you change your mind about our deal, then just keep walking. I'll take the hint. Don't worry. That stuttering golf guy from Isle 8. Heart... I couldn't help but crack a smile at the name Rin chose for himself, and before I could allow Eleanor the chance to manifest behind me to tease me to kingdom come, I pocket the note and go back to sorting through the stack of return books left on the desk. Once work was finished, so did Eleanor come back or not is my question. She didn't come back, she did. Once work was finished, I met up with Wren, who was patiently waiting for me on one of the benches near the library. From afar, he looked like an oversized puppy waiting for his owner to return. And immediately, I found it rather cute, especially with how his figurative tail started to wag upon my arrival. Wren seemed all too happy to see me, and before I could call him out on it, he offers me a bottle of water that I assume he bought, bought from one of the stores down the street. You worked hard today. Now you can finally rest, huh? He's looking down at me with a glimmer of expectancy in his eyes, and I hesitantly take the water from his grasp before giving an affirmative nod of my head. Thanks. No problem. Did you want to head off now, or do you want to rest for a bit? I mean, you were standing a lot today. He seemed lost in his own thoughts now, and I found myself wondering how he knew what I'd been doing all day. After all, I figured he would have left after he found that book, but maybe he stayed a bit longer to read it? Nah, I'm fine, but do you think we can make a quick detour? In the end, we eventually found ourselves heading in the direction of the local locksmith, and I made sure to ask Grin all about his entire life journey, on, uh, life story on the way there. <laughs> so, we still got his entire life, uh, life story, did we? <laughs> So, this is my place. You'll have to excuse the mess. I wasn't expecting to have anyone over. Hey, don't worry about it. I know you're not a messy person. I mean, 
from what I can tell, you, you, you don't seem like the type. Yeah? Well, I hope you can still keep that image of me after you see the state of my place. His soft laughter echoes down the hallway and almost drowns out the sound of my neighbor opening her door. He says, I know you're not a messy person. He so totally is the one that broke into our apartment, okay? He, he did. He, he's seen what our apartment looks like. He knows we're not too messy. Yeah. Oh. Oh, look, he's instantly grumpy again. He's like, oh no, another girl. <laughs> Violet almost seems embarrassed as she jumps behind her door, clearly not expecting someone to be around at this time. But she brush it, brushes it off with a soft smile and steps outside. Hello again, Sparrow. We seem to be bumping into each other a lot today, huh? Oh, who's this? Crap, how do I explain to her that Rin wasn't some guy I just met at work today? I'm certain she'll chew me out for bringing home a complete stranger, but still, he didn't exactly seem like the type to murder me in my sleep. We can hope. <laughs> in fact, he seems more like the type of guy to ask me to return his order because he asked for no pickles or something. Um, this is... I'm Rin. Immediately, his large flame frame blocks my view as he steps in front of me and my, and my neighbor, almost as if he wanted to put as much distance between us as possible. One of his hands shoot out from inside his pocket, and he gruffly offers it to Violet for her to shake. Concerned about his abrupt actions, I sidestep him and look up to gauge his expression. <laughs> He was so grumpy, and then as instantly we we look up at him, and he's like, "Pop, hi!" <laughs> that was perfect animation change right there. <laughs> I'm a friend of Sparrows. I see. I haven't seen you around before, though. Are you new to the area? Relax, Vi. He's not a serial killer or anything that we know of. At least, I sure hope he wasn't. Why did I feel a certain urge to defend him? It wasn't like I could confidently say that he was some holy being that flew down from heaven or something. Maybe he was the one who needed to be called Angel instead. Oh well, it didn't really matter. Really, Rin actually offered to stay at my place for the night in case that creep decides to come back. Oh, well, I mean, he certainly has the height for it. <laughs> I get that a lot. But don't worry. He's safe in my hands. Well, alright then. A friend of Sparrow's is a friend of mine. But I have my eye on you, Mr. Totally Not a Serial Killer. She whispers the next part to Ren under her breath, but clearly had the intention of letting me hear it as well. You guys are both grumpy now. Just remember, remember that that I know what you look like now, so don't complain if you see your face plastered all over milk cartons soon enough. Bye, Sparrow. Enjoy your night. And no funny business, you two. I'm off for my walk now. Toodles. Uh. Ignore her, please. <laughs> Alright. Look at these little hearts. Okay, but I gotta ask. Was she holding a potted plant on a walk? Yeah, she was. Dropping my keys into the bowl, I shrug out of my coat and drape it over one of the chairs near the entrance. Well, make yourself at home. Turning to Rin, I watch as he awkwardly shuffles about in the hallway, almost uncertain if he should come in or not. He moves to take off his shoes, and I watch in awe as he neatly stacks them next to the umbrella rack. Uh-oh. Are you the type to leave your shoes on at home? S sorry I'll- No, 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 you're fine. That's actually very respectable to, like, take off your shoes. God, he really was adorable. But now that he was here, I wasn't quite sure what to do next. Usually I pop on a TV show or some anime while I chow down on some takeaway food. Or even just talk with Moth until some unreasonable hour in the morning. But now that I had company over, I wasn't sure what to do. 
I didn't even know what Ren liked to do in his free time. Turning to face the pink-haired man once more, I almost jumped back in fright. Clearly, I wasn't expecting him to get so close to me while I was lost in thought. I could almost feel the heat radiating from his large frame, and I felt the small puffs of air leave his nostrils as he shyly leans down to look at me. Oh, um, so... Bree Sparrow. Bree! <laughs> Was there anything you wanted to do, or... Because I usually just... Damn it, it was hard to think straight when he was standing so close to me and wa and waving his stupidly strong scent of mint and fresh linen in my direction. Why was I even so attentive to the way he smelled? God, I'm starting to get creepy. Nah, I don't really have anything I needed to do. You can just go about your normal routine if you want, and I'll try not to get in your way. Or you can just put me in a corner somewhere and I'll pretend I'm not there. Whatever works for you. No offense, but you take up a lot more room than you think. So I doubt that would work. <laughs> Touche. Once again, I found myself being drawn in by his soft laughter. And I couldn't help but chuckle along with him. Was he always this easy to talk to? It was like we were ch children, childhood friends who were reminiscing about old times or something. Except the only one making it awkward now was me. Glancing back at Rin, I notice how he's still looking at me with those expectant eyes of his as he looms over me in the entryway. He obviously do uh, doesn't want to do something I'd be uncomfortable with, and he couldn't really suggest anything since this wasn't his home, so I guess the choice was up to me after all. Okay. Boop. <laughs> he's like a big puppy. <laughs> He's like a big puppy. Okay. Watch some television, make a late night snack, suggest getting ready for bed. Um. Well, we just got home. We said normally we'd watch some TV. Huh. Or I would just suggest getting ready for bed. It's getting rather late, isn't it? Did you just want to get ready for bed? I can show you to the bathroom where, while I get the air mattress out. It, it, it's fine. I don't want to be a bother. I, I can just sleep on the floor or something. I don't mind. Honest. There's a couch right there. <laughs> There's a couch right there. Why don't he sleep on the couch? <laughs> hey, don't worry about it. It's not a bother at all. Besides, I have timber floorings. It'll just be two seconds. I turn and make a beeline for my closet before he can respond. And yet, I barely got three meters away before I could already hear the heavy footsteps of Ren falling close behind me once more. Almost like a lost puppy. It was honestly kind of cute. Shaking my head to dismiss those thoughts, I pull out my trusty air mattress from the closet and begin setting it up in the lounge room. Oh no. That is until I found it had a massive gaping hole on the side. Those damn rats. I swear, if I had the chance to move apartments, I'd take it in a heartbeat. But until then, I'll continue to send complaint after complaint to that asshole landlord. R really, I, I don't mind sleeping on the floor. And like I said, I have timber flooring. Unless... No. No way I was about to suggest it. Absolutely not. There's no way in hell I was going to... <laughs> you can share my bed. <laughs> okay. You can share my bed. You can sleep on my couch. My hallway has carpet. <laughs> Maybe if I stack some blankets on the floor. Oh, gosh. Mm. My hallway has carpet. <laughs> You could have kick him and be like, yeah, you can sleep on the floor, but why don't you try the hallway? It's a little softer. No, no, no hallway. Uh, maybe if I stack some blankets on the floor, like, yeah, yeah, that could work. That could actually make a comfy bed. Um, you could sleep on my couch, which I think is the second best to sleeping on the bed. Because couches can be really comfy. It depends on if they have, like, the uh, metal frame in them or if it's just, like... 
a comfy, you know, solid comfy couch. Because the metal frames do hurt like the dickens when you sleep on them. Um, or you can share my bed. <laughs> this is, this is a demo. This is just day one. So, let's just go all in, okay? You can share my bed. Look how red he is. <laughs> Fuck, did I really just suggest that? What was wrong with me? And where did I get so much confidence from? I was certain that my face was beat red by now, and I could barely spare a glance at Ren to notice that he was sporting a similar demeanor. Y you're, uh, oh. Oh, does he look mad now? Sorry, I don't know why I... No, no, no. It, I don't mind. It, it's just... Is it really okay with you? I don't want to make you uncomfortable by invading your personal space. And I, I really don't mind sleeping on the floor. No, it's fine. I'm the one who asked you to do this favor in the first place. So I owe you. After showing Ren to the bathroom and changing into my own pajamas at the laundry room, I made, met him in the middle and we both made our way to the bedroom. I didn't bother flicking on the light, knowing fully well that I'd be busy ignoring his presence next to mine by pretending to be asleep. So instead, I awkwardly lead him in before turning his to face him in the darkness. You can just pick whichever side you prefer. Y y you first. Oh, but uh, maybe I should be the one closest to the door, j just in case. He really didn't need to be so considerate. But no nonetheless, I take my side on the left and he slowly slips up and slowly slipped underneath the sheets. It must have looked forced, but I awkwardly pack the empty space next to me and shoot Ren a crooked smile. Neither one of these boys are going to sleep at all tonight. <laughs> at all. No. <coughs> he slowly makes his way over and joins me under the covers. And before he could even say anything, I slam down a pillow between us. Thwoop. J just in case I roll over or something, I I'm known to be a cuddler in my sleep. Oh, <laughs> that's fine. I'm the same, I think. You think? I mean, no one's told me yet, but I've woken up to my limbs tangled around my pillow more times than I can count. I see. Y yeah. Great. Now it's awkward again. But being this close to him, I could smell his scent once more and it almost felt comforting. I had to fight the urge to roll over onto my side and face him, or rather, the pillow, once more. The bed dips as Ren moves around to get comfortable, and I find myself wondering what he might be looking at right now. Was it my ceiling? The pillow between us? Or was he laying on his side and facing the wardrobe? Why the hell? hell was I so concerned in the first place? Sure, I suppose I did find him attractive, a bit, a bit eccentric at times, but that didn't explain why I wanted to look at his face one more time. Did I want to get closer to him? Or was I simply curious to know what the stranger was currently doing in my bed? How will you respond? Move the pillow, call out to him, say goodnight. Uh, it'd be cool to move the pillow and be like, okay, yeah, let's cuddle. <laughs> Call out to him, say goodnight, say goodnight. Maybe it was just me feeling this way. Stifling the urge to reach out to him, I instead roll to my side and spare the pink-haired man one last glance. Good night, Wren. Goodnight, Sparrow. Sweet dreams. I I'll stay up a bit longer, just in case anything happens. So don't worry about a thing and just get some sleep, okay? No one's going to break in on my watch. I'll see you in the morning. With his protective presence and soft voice still in my mind, I soon found myself drifting off into a blissful sleep. End of day, Demo. Thank you so much for playing. Have you tried getting all the different endings yet? Be sure to follow the game for more updates. Ah. I need to check and see how many endings there is. Because uh, apparently there's more than one ending. I wonder what would have happened if we would have, like... Hang on, hang on, hang on. What happened if we told him to sleep on the floor? Let's see. Move the pillow. Before I could stop myself, my hand reaches out to the pillow from between us. I was immediately met with soft blue eyes. Wish I could see a uh, widen in surprise even in the darkness of the room. Hi. 
Hey. Talk about awkward. Without realizing it, I discard the pillow somewhere behind me, and I continue to stare deeply into Rin's eyes. There seems to be some unspoken tension between the both of us, and I had to fight the urge to act upon it. What exactly was I feeling? And why did I want to find out? Ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> I'm just exploring a bit more. <laughs> Lean over and kiss him? N never mind. Lean over and kiss him. Before I could think, I found myself leaning over and drawing my face closer to his. Rin seemed to be on the same wavelength, wavelength as me, and I felt his breath, warm breath fan against my cheeks as my own face draw near to, nearer to close the distance. One of my hands shoots out to rest against his chest, and before I could stop myself, I lean in the rest of the way. Almost immediately, I was met with a pair of soft lips and the taste of cherry on my mouth. My eyelids flutter shut at the, sen the sensation, and I let Rin's overwhelming presence engulf my entire being. The smell of fresh mint, masculine deter deter deodorant, and something that was so wholly Rin flooded my senses, and I felt myself become intoxicated by it all. It was like two pieces of a puzzle slotting together with how perfectly our lips seemed to meld with each other, and I couldn't pull myself away. One of his hands rises up to my cut my cheek, and I find myself kneeling softly as Ren tilts his head to deepen the kiss. He takes my bottom lip into his own and gently bites down before his tongue joins in, curiously prod prodding against my lips as if to test the waters. You know, you know, for just meeting today, <laughs> I shouldn't have made them kiss if they just met. I was curious. Rin is not saying no. He was like, ah, no, no, you know, I'm good about this. When I met him halfway with my own, he seemed to have finally found the reassurance he's needed before deepening the kiss even more. His other hand comes to rest on my waist before gently pulling me closer, clearly not wanting any distance between us. So Rin wanted this just as much as I did. I could feel just how eager he was as he kissed me with more desperation and fever than anything I'd experienced in my life. But we could only go on for so long before one of us needed air, and that someone happened to be me. When I pulled away, Rin practically whines at the loss of contract, contact, and I watched with slight amusement as his lips unconsciously followed to seek out mine once more before his eyes flutter open. Oh, he liked that. He wants more. <laughs> A beat passes that we just stare at each other, taking in the moment and to process what had just occurred. His hands are still on me, and it was only when I noticed that he was tracing faint stars on my cheek with his thumb. Did, did that really just happen? His voice is soft, so soft that I could barely make out what he was saying. He's staring at me with just so much overwhelming ad ador adoration in his eyes that I couldn't help but look away. And that was when I saw just how hard that kiss affected him. Mm. <laughs> As if noticing what I was staring at, Rin let out an awkward sound and he shifted so his lower half was obscured by the blankets once more. Yeah, Rin really enjoyed that kiss, guys. So sorry, you're you're just so hard to resist. Not not that I'd want to resist you or anything, just well, um, I, I guess what I'm trying to say is that I, I, I want you. Taken aback by his sudden boldness, I had to allow myself a moment to collect my thoughts. Oh my gosh! <laughs> oh, I want you too. Maybe we should go to bed now. <laughs> oh dear. Oh dear. <laughs> we have come to a decision. Dun, dun, dun. Now, if I do, I want you to. Does that mean we're going to get a spicy scene? Hmm. You, you do? D then, then tell me clearly what you want from me. Do you want me to kiss you again? Or, or do you want something else? Where does this confident or Aurora suddenly come from? The moment I showed interest, it was like he became a different person. Not that I was about to complain or anything. The, the side of him was insanely attractive. 
You've gone quiet on me, Sparrow. You have to tell me what you want, or I'll stop. Oh! I want you on top of me. I want you to kiss me again. Actually, we should go to bed now. Those are 18 plus. Oh. <laughs> okay. Uh, let me know down below if you guys would like to see one of the 18 plus options. I know I personally do. But let me know. And I'll have to make a another uh, video. And it will be age restricted if I do. So, I just want everyone to be safe. But let me know down below, because I'm curious. I want to see it. <laughs> Ooh, I wonder if it's got artwork. <sighs> okay, okay, okay. We're going to be safe. We're backing up. Actually, maybe we should go to bed now. Oh, yeah. Okay. Sorry, I hope I didn't make things awkward. Not at all. It's just we really don't know each other that well yet. We don't. We actually shouldn't. I see. Yeah, that makes sense. But we could get to know each other in the morning. Maybe over breakfast. Yeah, I like that. Giving him a faint nod. Could he even see in the dark? I awkwardly turn over into my side and settle back into bed. I feel the mattress shift once more as Ren does the same. And a heavy silence lingers in the air. Maybe he fell asleep already? Deciding to push my luck and break the silence once more, I whisper out to Ren one final time. Good night, Ren. Ah. Uh, the fleeting touch of his hand still lingers on my cheek as I find myself drifting off into a blissful sleep. Oh, oh goodness, we could have gotten spicy. Uh, ooh, I wonder what would happen if we, like, <coughs> flat out refused him from the start. I want to know. Okay, there's going to have to be a part two. <laughs> Let me know if you guys would like the spicy part uh, included. Because uh, I'm going to see it whether, whether you guys see it or not. Because I want to know. <laughs> but if you guys want to see the spicy part, let me know down below. Um, I definitely want to do another part to, like, explore what would happen if we didn't, like, if we weren't nice to him and just be like, no, you can't go at home with us. Would he have broken in later? You know? That's things to think about. But, wow, this part has gotten very long. I need to, <laughs> I need to end it here, guys. Okay. <laughs> but leave your comments down below and I know we haven't seen the last of Ren, okay? We haven't seen the last of this boy. This tall puppy. Okay. <laughs> Bye, guys.